Hi, and welcome to my channel. There are rumours all over the place at the moment of Kodak film price rises in the coming few months. I'm going to find out whether photography really was much, much cheaper in 1965 with the Wallace Heaton Blue Book. Before I go any further, do we actually know if the rumours of Kodak price rises are true? Well, I'm basing my information on places where I normally base it, which would be Nico's Photo News. And I'll say hi to Nico if he happens to look at my channel. Um, very reliable. He has got that uh, particular snippet of information from Cosmo Photo. And Cosmo Photo uh, has a very, very good reputation for getting good information. So that's to give you a little bit of an idea of the chain of rumour. Uh, also, I'd like to mention that um, I saw a fascinating uh, YouTube video by another of my favourite contributors, um, Xenography, Nigel. Um, basically asking why film prices had gone up as much as they have. So I was very, very lucky um, that a next door neighbour of mine, um, when going through his late father's effects, uh, found this uh, photographic blue book, um, which is essentially a catalogue of major, major photo dealer, Wallace Heaton, um, who were um, existent in London, um, I don't know actually when they finished, um, but certainly from the end of the Second World War all the way through to the 1970s. This, very much as far as prices were concerned, the Wallace Heaton Blue Book was the Bible of people looking for prices for equipment, film, paper. And we're going to take a dive into this and we're also going to use the very, very useful Bank of England inflation calculator to see what prices are equivalent to from 1965 to 2023. Okay, for a bit of context, let's look at other costs and expenses in 1965. The average two bedroom house I'm talking UK prices here, was about £3,500. And the average non-manual worker, maybe a shop worker or an office clerk, would be earning around £27 a week. Now, if we put £27 a week into a calculator to see what that equates to in modern money, that comes to around £420 a week. Not hugely different from average wages these days. OK, let's get to the bit that you're all really waiting for, which was the cost of film in 1965. Let me just say before I dive into that, that we're talking about colour negative film and Actually, colour negative film wasn't that popular in 1965, um, at least not amongst serious amateurs. Amateurs would have tended to go for colour transparency film like Kodachrome. Um, the colour negative film was more seen as a, a snapshot as thing and really was only just coming into general acceptance. But Kodak were the leaders of the pack and they were doing Kodakolor 2 for 10 shillings and sixpence for a 20 exposure cassette. Um, I'll point out that 20 exposure was the standard or 36 at the time. It hadn't yet got to the 24 or 36. Uh, 10 shillings and sixpence, um, when you put it into um, a calculator for cost, uh, to modern day comes at around 
six pounds fifty to seven pounds. If we look at the two modern equivalents of Kodak Color 2, which will be Kodak Gold 200 or Kodak Color Plus, um, they actually bracket um, that price, one being £6.50 for a roll and the other one being around £7.50 to £8 a roll. And that's not hugely different to the prices we've been paying in 2022, the beginning of 2023. Ah, but I hear you cry. What about Portra 160 or Portra 400, which are 15, 16, 17 pounds a roll? Aren't they hugely more expensive than they would have been in 1965? Well, as I've said, there really wasn't an equivalent in negative film to, to those emulsions in 1965. The films that you would have to compare them to would be premium colour transparency films like Kodachrome. And in fact, Kodachrome was pr quite pricey. A confusing issue would be there that Kodachrome was sold with processing included. So if we look at a premium colour transparency film in 1965, like Ektachrome X, a 36 exposure cassette of that um, equates in today's money with around £16, which I think is around equivalent to the quality level we get from modern colour negative films. So why do we get this idea that photography was so much cheaper in the past? I mean, if you actually go back to the 1930s and 1940s, Film photography, well, certainly colour film photography, was even more expensive than it was in the 60s. But, at least the way I see this playing, is that mass acceptance of colour negative film drove the price down and down relative to wages. And by the 1970s, the 1980s, when... I was using colour negative film professionally and the 1990s, colour negative film prices had become at an all time low. This was just before digital photography and it was certainly before the advent of the phone camera. The latter utterly destroyed the snapshotter market and of course the snapshotter market helped to subsidise the more serious photography market. Um, companies like Kodak would have sold an absolute truckload of film for the people who, you know, just took their camera to parties or on the annual holiday. Um, and that paid for the big film, pro film lines uh, generating thousands upon thousands of yards of film a day. That all disappeared. And companies like Kodak scaled back um, in order just to cope with the tiny demand that was left. That demand has now increased, but unfortunately um, Kodak have scaled back to save money. And now they're forced to either um, let film slip into shortage, which is what it currently is, or invest more money in enlarging their capacity to produce film. Unfortunately, film photography has in effect been thrown back around 70 years to a time when film and um, cameras in general were relatively more expensive um, than they were later on in the 70s and 80s. This is not... Um, something that I think is going to change for a very long time, if indeed it does change at all. But from a personal viewpoint, I would rather have uh, colour film available than the ridiculous shortages that we have been experiencing, whereby there's plenty advertised, um, but none in stock. So is it all doom and gloom? Will... Um, the 
green shoots of regrowth of film shooting be frosted off to the ground by the price rises? I don't actually think so. I think if you want to shoot film, you'll shoot film. Um, you may shoot less colour and, and take up the slack by shooting black and white. Um, there, there are many ways around it. If you want to shoot film, I think you will shoot film. Um, it's a shame that the prices are going up, but I think it's pretty much inevitable. So, if you've enjoyed this video, perhaps you'll hit the like button. And if you want to support the channel, please subscribe because it really does put a huge cheesy grin on my face and brightens up my whole day. Remember, if you'd like to see any excerpts and articles on here, on this channel, about things from the wonderful Wallace Heaton Blue Book from 1965 to 66, let me know in the comments. I'll try and go into some more details, you know, processing equipment and price of cameras, which was quite a eye-opener, actually. Anyway, until I see you again, take care and keep taking pictures.